Hi, uh, good afternoon. My name is Cullen, and I lead the PyTorch MPS backend development at Apple. Today, I will talk about GPU accelerated PyTorch training using MPS backend on Mac platforms. So, to start off with, I'll provide an overview of the software stack we have. Then I'll discuss some of the optimizations we have made in the backend and provide some pointers to debug issues. And finally, I will go over some results and things which we are working on. So let's get started. Earlier this year, we introduced metal acceleration in PyTorch, working closely with the core team. So a special shout out to Alvin, Nikita, Edward, and other core members. It was really helpful to help design and implement this. So let's talk about a little bit about our MPS backend and software components it relies on. Metal is the GPU programming API on Apple platforms. Metal performance shaders is a collection of high performance GPU primitives for various fields like image processing, linear algebra, ray tracing, and of course, machine learning. These metal kernels are optimized to provide the best performance on all of our platforms. Now, sitting on top of it is our metal performance shaders graph, which is a general purpose compute graph for GPUs. It extends support to multi dimensional tensors. Also, it has compiler technology to allow us to do various optimizations, such as operator fusion, constant folding, dead code elimination, and many more. The PyTorch MPS backend implements both the operation kernels and the runtime framework, which calls into MPS graph, MPS, and our metal frameworks. This enables PyTorch to use highly efficient kernels from MPS, along with Mytel's command queues, command buffers, and synchronization primitives. Operations in PyTorch will create unique graphs, which will be cached, which reduces the CPU overhead. And these operations are then encoded onto stream, which I'll just discuss later. For more details, you can um, refer to our WWC talk um, from earlier this year of acceleration um, on metal, um, acceleration uh, uh, ML with metal. Now let's take a look, closer look at some of the runtime components we have in MPS backend. To start off with, we have a simple device class which does discovery of available metal devices and selects the best GPU device for you. And then we have this stream abstraction, which basically is how we implement um, using our metals command queue and the loss active command buffer, which is used to work, um, encode all the work onto. And then we have our allocator, which uses metal heaps and automatic hazard tracking and similar heuristics which are used by other GPU backends. We have added GPU acceleration for a variety of operations. Currently, our MPS backend supports over 246 operations, and many more are being actively worked on. We are really excited to engage with the PyTorch developer community. Since our release and prototype phase, we have had a lot of GitHub issues. 149 of these we have been fixed so far, and we are actively working on resolving the rest. It's a very fast-moving field, so uh, we are trying to engage with them as fast as we can. For unsupported operations, there was a lot of interest in contributing to our backend. It only took a couple of days for PyTorch developer community to pick up all the filed issues, and there have been 30 operations which have been added so far. There have been 46 pull requests just have been created and successfully merged by developers at large, and we are really excited to have you guys contribute. So please send the issues, PRs. Now I'll discuss some of the optimizations we have made in the MPS backend and debugging tricks. As you very well know, PyTorch uses a tensor to be a view of an existing tensor, which shares the same underlying storage. And this allows you to do a lot of operations and represent computation. Now let's take a simple example of a slice operation on a random tensor. Now this creates a view operation in, a, in our MPS backend, which is, used, which is implemented using a gather scatter approach. The graph takes input size strides offset of a nice threaded operation and creates an index tensor. And this on which we actually perform a gather operation 
the execution of the graph and the materialization of the data happens in the following operation, which uses the gather output. Similarly, the scatter graph takes care of our in-place view operations. For more details, you can refer to our wiki page for, um, um, in, our, in the resource section, which I'll go over. The gather scatter graphs can be expensive for common view operations. To address this, we have remapped some of these operations to the existing MPS Graph API. Now let's discuss uh, the commit and continue, uh, which we have added to our MPS backend. PyTorch relies on dispatching work to the GPU for each operation. Consider a network with a simple batch on mob. The op consists of two reduction kernels for mean and variance, and then you have element wise operator kernels. With no commit and continue, which is at the top of the timeline, you can say, uh, what will happen is there won't, um, the entire op will be encoded on a single middle command buffer on the CPU. And this then will be dispatched to the GPU. Now, you can see this empty uh, block on the GPU timeline. That's what the idle time in GPU refers to. With commit and continue, which you can see in the bottom, we, have enabled, uh, we are able to parallelize the CPU and GPU work. The way it does this is, as you can see that while the reduction kernel for main op is running on the GPU, the CPU encoding work for variance and element-wise operations has been started. Furthermore, the backend has heuristics to ensure that a new command buffer is not created for each kernel dispatch, and that reduces the driver overhead. Now I'll provide some pointers which I found helpful for debugging while developing on the MPS backend. I know this is a new stack, so I just wanted to have some pointers there, and we'll continue to work on updating our wiki page with this. So op development, um, when we do, when you're writing an operation with our MPS Graph API, it can be useful to dump the underlying graph for more details and introspection. And the pointer, the code actually allows you to do that. If you run into crash or hang coming from our OS framework, such as Metal or MPS Graph, please file a bug using Feedback Assistant. Moreover, console app on Mac is quite useful to get more information on backtraces, spin dumps, and logs. So please use that. On memory side, there are good command line tools such as leak, heap, and footprint. It allows you to do a detailed memory analysis. And we will provide more details on this on our uh, wiki page. Now let's look at some of the performance results. The chart shows the speed up of using MPS backend as compared to CPU. Here, the baseline um, CPU is one. The numbers were collected on M1 Ultra with the latest 1.13 release. It was, uh, using, we used the Torch Bench on a variety of networks to collect those. We have seen good speed ups across different networks, up to 64 times faster on some, and on an average of 10x, uh, 10x faster. Now, I want to spend some time on like, what we are currently focusing on and what are um, things which we want to focus on in the near future. Um, MPS backend is currently in prototype phase. Working with PyTorch team, we are identifying the criteria to qualify for the beta phase, and that's our primary focus. We want to make it stable and be able to run as many operations as possible with good correctness and uh, performance. Also, we are trying to expand our op coverage using some of the feedback we have uh, gotten on a, a GitHub issue which is listed here. Encouraged by the adoption of MPS backend for stable diffusion, we have noticed we would like to work with model developers to enable even more ML workflows on Mac platforms. Apart from this, we would like to hear from you and gather feedback. Here are some of the resources we have, which I have covered over the, um, in our talk right now. And thank you. Thanks for inviting me here and giving this opportunity to speak um, to you guys. We are really excited to be working on our MPS backend and looking forward to giving you the best experience on Apple platforms. Thank you. Yeah.